one minute past midday on March the 19th, 1988. It was a day in which the world watched the most disturbing television pictures ever to emerge from Ulster's troubled history. The IRA tried to stop the cameras, but failed. The driver, Corporal Wood, was the first to be set upon. His gun fired. Corporal Wood had tried to warn off his attackers, but they beat him to the ground. Eventually, he would face the barrel of his own gun. Two minutes after the attack started, both corporals were dragged through park gates. The only TV camera still filming was stopped. The world didn't see what happened next. A smaller crowd stripping, beating and kicking their victims here. It lasted over five and a half minutes. Then they were thrown over this wall, a nine-foot drop into the hands of their killers. At nine minutes past 12, they were driven away in a taxi. Henry Maguire was in the front passenger seat. He shouted at the crowds to get the camera which was recording these pictures. Another camera was in the sky though, 500 feet above the Anderson's Town Road. The taxi turned right into a council estate. The driver knew exactly where the corporals were to die. On a Saturday lunchtime, men with murder on their minds drove past children playing in the street. They were heading back into the area where it all started. It was 12 minutes past 12. The corporals had less than a minute left to live. The journey was to end here in a car park on waste ground, a spot chosen so the killers could escape easily on foot back onto the crowded Anderson's Town Road. 24 seconds after the taxi had pulled up, Corporal Wood ran off to the right of the cab but was shot. 20 seconds later, Corporal Howes was shot. Nine more bullets were to follow. It had all taken 12 minutes. It had all been filmed. Two men lay dead. Their car was ablaze a few streets away. And at this stage, no one knew who they were or how vast and complex the murder hunt would be. RUC detectives were to spend a year analyzing video from the funeral. The army surveillance, known as Heli Telly, was the only official security presence. There was a no-go policy for IRA funerals in force. This was at the request of Sinn Féin, who mounted their own security operation. They had warned mourners to be on their guard against outsiders. Only three days previously, loyalist gunman Michael Stone had attacked the IRA funeral of the Gibraltar Three. This funeral was for one of the victims of that attack, IRA man Kevin Brady. Detectives started their inquiry by seizing videotapes and still photographs. A massive scientific operation followed. 1,500 RUC officers were to view the tapes, matching them with poorer quality army aerial pictures. They noted the clothing of suspects, tracing their movements and their actions. Maguire and Murphy walked into the dock to face a courtroom which, by Ulster law, has no jury. And more awe-inspiring than the judge and lawyers were the banks of television screens which were to seal their fate. Among all the faces, this was the first sighting of the red-haired Maguire. The bearded Murphy had organized the carrying of the coffin. To prepare its case, the prosecution had to sift through over a quarter of a million still video frames and 17 hours of moving picture. Court number one has never seen a terrorist trial like it. Legal jargon was replaced by the language of a television studio. 23 media witnesses gave evidence their anonymity protected by these curtains. But it was mainly the testimony of the helicopter pilot and police officers who identified Maguire and Murphy on the videos which proved the Crown's case. From this electronic witness box they highlighted the two men using a joystick to move a marker superimposed on TV screens. Both Maguire and Murphy took part in the beating in the park and stood by for the murder. Maguire was seen attacking Corporal Howes before he was shot. The prosecution also relied heavily on this video of the taxi which took the corporals away. It showed Maguire in the passenger seat, appearing to either clench his fist or point to the inside of the cab. The prosecution used special enhancement to make the pictures clearer than seen here in order to identify Maguire. The police say they also know the identity of the driver, who hasn't been caught. And detectives believe five other IRA men were in the back of this taxi, among them one of the two gunmen who actually shot the corporals. 
They're also still on the run, and the police say they know who they are. The corporals had completed their duties as armed escorts for civilian maintenance workers before their fatal drive to Andersonstown. The most likely explanation for their route was the one suggested at the time, that Corporal Wood was unofficially showing the newly arrived Corporal Howes around the trouble spots. But did they know about the IRA funeral? The army had suggested the two corporals were briefed. But the sergeant responsible told the trial that he didn't know about the funeral. Whatever happened, the security forces did not respond effectively while viewing the live helicopter pictures. The attack started at 12.01. The first of the fatal shots had been fired by 12.13. But the first RUC unit didn't arrive on the scene until 12.21, 20 minutes after the attack on the car started. The RUC say they couldn't be certain whether it was an IRA trap for the security forces. The Army helicopter pilot told the trial that he was ordered off following the two gunmen in their getaway taxi. Was there a mix-up between the Army in the air and the RUC? And finally, how much did the two corporals know of their fate on this waste ground? Detectives believe at the very last moment they took their captors by surprise, having pretended to be unconscious in the taxi. They died fighting. Later on this year, the Royal Corps of Signals is to unveil a regimental plaque which will pay tribute to Corporal Wood and Corporal Howes for bravery.